guys, thanks for coming to listen to another story. The book I have for you today is Armando and the Blue Tarp School. And it's written by Edith Hope Fine and Justin Pinkerton Josephson. It's illustrated by Hernan Sosa. So this boy Armando, right here, goes to a school, but it's very different from our school. He lives in a part of the world where there are no schools or teachers, but this teacher, Senor David, right here, helps children learn to read and write without a school building. Armando only wants a chance to learn when the story begins. All day, Armando and Papa have worked at the dump, picking through trash. Now they trudge down the rocky hillside. Afternoon sunlight shone on broken glass, rickety fences, and tumble-down houses in their colonia, their neighborhood. Ba-beep, ba-beep. A, trunk, a truck horn blared from below. Armando pointed, Mira, look, Papa, it's Senor David from last summer. Papa was silent for a moment. Then he said, you can go just this once. Armando hurried down the gravelly path to tell his friend Isabella the news. Off they ran, down the dirt road, across the wobbly plank, and past the big rock. So what have you guys learned about Armando, Papa, and their community so far? It's pretty different from where we live. Senor David, you're back, said Armando. My friends, mis amigos, I've missed you, says Senor David, spreading a big tarp on the ground. Your school, Armando said, I remember. The first time Senor David called his blue tarp a school, Armando hadn't understood. He thought schools had walls, floors, and roofs. But Senor David said a school could be anywhere, even on a tarp in a colonia. Ready to learn more? asked Senor David. See, si, the children shouted. Yes. This kind of reminds me of right now. Your school is your home. My school for my kids is our home. It's a really different. So a tarp right here is a sheet of material. Sometimes it's waterproof and it's used to cover things. So I wonder why Armando was allowed to go to school for only one day. Nearby, scrawny chickens pecked at the dirt. Hen, said Senor David. He flapped his arms. Brock, brock, brock. La Galina Hen, said the children. They flapped their arms too. Brock, brock, brock. On his chalkboard, Senor David wrote the letters of the alphabet. The children called out the letters in Spanish and English, then practiced words they had learned last year. House, la casa, boy, el muchacho, girl, la muchacha. Very good, muy bien, said Senor David. We'll work hard this summer, but we'll have fun too. Armando couldn't wait. That night, Armando ate slowly. At last, he asked if he could go to school on Senor David's blue tarp. Papa frowned. Do not fill your head with dreams of school. I went last year, said Armando. You are older now, Papa said. I wish things could be different. But we, but we are pependores, trash pickers. You must do the work of our family. Mama added, your sisters are small. I need to stay here with them. The money you and Papa make helps us live. Tears stung Armando's eyes more than anything he wanted to learn, but he knew Papa and Mama were right. Later, Armando sat in his, on his thin mattress. With a stubby pencil, pencil, he sketched a picture of Senor David's truck. As Papa and Armando neared the dump the next morning, the foul smell got stronger and stronger. <sighs> Rumbling trash trucks backed up. Eep, eep, eep. Out tumbled heaps of garbage. Workers rushed towards to tear boxes and rip open plastic bags. Flocks of seagulls circled and dove fighting over, dove over bits of rotting food. Armando searched for bottles and cans, clothes and toys, some to sell, some to use. In one tattered bag, he found shiny buttons and silver thread. From another, he pulled a smudged notebook and dented pin of paints. These he kept. He mopped his sweaty face and swatted at buzzing flies. What was Senor David teaching now, he wondered. What are you guys thinking about Armando's thoughts and him working at the dump? By the time Armando and Papa headed for home, the sun had dipped low, painting the sky red. Hearing the gate squeak, Isabella raced over to share what she had learned at school. Words covered her paper. La reina is frog, she said. We hopped with Senor David. We said, kruka, kruka, and ribbit, ribbit. Armando's shoulders drooped. I wish I could go with you. I know, said Isabella. I'll bring you new words, I promise. After Isabella left, Armando copied her words in his notebook. Then he made a picture for each one. Before he went to sleep, he put his notebook and paints with the other treasures on the ledge above his bed. 
Every day Armando worked at the dump, and every day he longed to be sitting on the blue tarp. One evening, Papa said, people are talking about Senor Davis' school. Armando's stomach flip-flopped. We have always been Pepindoris, Papa went on, but learning is important. It could help you find different work when you grow up, maybe in the city. So Mama and I decided you may leave the dump early for school. But, but the money, said Armando. We will manage somehow. Gracias, Papa, thank you. Armando hurried outside to tell Isabella. They whooped with joy. So why do you guys think Papa's mind changed? Think about that for a minute. What changed his mind? From then on, Armando worked mornings with Papa. Each afternoon, Armando and Isabella walked down the dirt road across the wobbly plank and past the big rock to Senor David's school. Sometimes the lessons were easy, sometimes they were hard, but soon the children could write sentences and do numbers. They sang songs, played games, and drew pictures. Below a drawing of red flowers, Armando wrote, Las rosas huelen bien, roses smell nice. By a girl jumping rope, he wrote, Isabella salta, Isabella jumps. One day, a cow lumbered by. Hola, vaca, said Armando. Moo, moo. Hello, cow, said Senor David. Moo, moo. Cows give milk. La leche. Cows give milk, echoed the children. Another day, Armando sketched a big fat pig snuffling through garbage. Great pig, tremendo cierto, said Senor David. Then Armando showed him a painting that he had made of a tall man with brown hair and a mustache. On it, he had written, mi amigo, mi friend. Is that me? said Senor David. Si, said Armando. Gracias, mi amigo, said Senor David. He shook Armando's hand. Week after week, Armando wrote, drew, and painted. Soon, words, sentences, and bright pictures filled his notebook. So what do you think about, what do you think this drawing means to Senor David? One night, the smell of smoke jolted Armando awake. Winds howled, woods crackled. Fuego, fuego, people shouted, fire, fire. Mama and Papa gathered the children and ran from the house. Flames roared through the colina. Papa rushed to help. Men slapped at the fire with wet blankets. They threw buckets of water. Safe on the hillside, Mama hugged the children close. Heart thudding, Armando watched as a wall of greedy flames swallowed up his house. At dawn, hot ashes smoldered. Many houses had burned. Armando stared at the patch of ground where his family's home had stood. Nothing was left. Senor David put his hand on Armando's shoulder. Your words and drawings? Todo esto perdido, said Armando in a small, sad voice. All gone. I'm sorry. Lo siento, said Senor David. Oh, it's sad. Two days later, the scent of smoke still hung in the air. Senor David and the children gathered on his blue tarp. What a hard time for you, mis amigos, he said. No lessons today. Let's just draw. Armando colored orange and red flames, black smoke, and frightened faces. As the children worked, a car drove up. Please welcome our visitors, Senor David said. They're writing a story about the fire in our school for the newspaper. The photographer snapped pictures. The reporter scribbled notes. When she spotted Armando's drawing, she asked to borrow it. Armando wondered why. He glanced at Senor David. Go ahead, Armando, he said. It's okay. I wonder what's going to happen next. I mean, you guys to think about what you think might happen next. The next day, Senor David held up a newspaper. Look, Mira, he said. Armando's eyes grew wide. On the front page was his drawing of the fiery night. His picture for everyone to see. The children cheered. Armando grinned. Senor David gave him a copy of the paper to show Mama and Papa. Later that week came another surprise. When a kind woman in the city saw Armando's painting and read the story, she sent money to build a school. Where, said Armando. Right where our blue tarp school has been, said Senor David. Armando closed his eyes, imagining how the school would look. Over the next few weeks, Senor David and Papa build a new house for Armando's family from fence boards, chicken wire, and old garage doors. So it's pretty different from where we live, you guys. They helped other families rebuild too. Whenever people could, they worked on the school. They mixed cement, smoothed out a floor. They sawed wood, pounded nails to build walls and a sturdy roof. Light poured in where the windows would go. At last, the school was finished. The children crowded inside, chattering and pointing. They darted from benches to tables to books with colorful pictures. Isabella ran her fingers over the braided blue rug. It's like our tarp, she said. Then Armando spotted a wooden easel splattered with paint. Your papa brought that, said Senor David. Armando's eyes sparkled. 
Papa wanted him here, lean, learning and painting. Ever since the first boop, boop, beep of Senor David's truck horn, Armando had longed for such a place. A place to learn, a place to grow, a place for friends. Armando flung his arms wide. Words tumbled out. I am happy from here to the sky. Oh. And you guys, this is based on a true story. So this is the author's note. It shows um, David Lynch's life work. Teaching the children in Colonia became his life work. That's actually Senor David. Students at work with their teacher. Youngsters head home with their paintings. And that is the school founder, David Lynch, in 2006. So this is actually Senor David. There's children walking through the Colonia at the trash dump where he actually was working. David Lynch teaching in the new school building right there. Excited children on their first day of class. Felipe with his students. And preschoolers gathering with their hero. So this is actually a true story. Oh my goodness, incredible. Wow. And there's a glossary and punctuation guide of all the Spanish words and how to pronounce them. That was a great story. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did.